Today we're out here in Irvine, California doing something a little unusual because we're looking at a Mazda that you can't buy today and this exact Mazda won't really ever be on sale. However, it is full of things that Mazda is going to be selling the public in America in the calendar year 2019. That includes an all new Mazda 3 platform, some new seats, but most importantly, the Skyactiv X engine, which you can see definitely displayed on the side of this vehicle. This is really an interesting brand new engine technology. It's the world's first production compression ignition gasoline engine. That sounds like a mouthful, but it really is kind of an extraordinary tale. You see this Mazda 3 right here, just like the Mazda 6 behind me, every other Mazda sold in America, and of course, every other gasoline car sold in America, period. The spark plug in the engine is what initiates the combustion of the gasoline and produces the power for the engine. But things are very different in the average diesel vehicle in America because diesel cars don't use spark plugs. Instead, just the compression of the air and the fuel is enough to cause the fuel to ignite. But up until this point, it's been a lot trickier with gasoline because gasoline is a lot more volatile than diesel. And so it's harder to have those high compression situations where you could have gasoline do that versus a diesel engine. And that's where Skyactive X comes in, because this is, again, the world's first compression ignition gasoline engine. But they're not just compressing the gases until they explode, because that wouldn't be as reliable and predictable as if you could make that event happen exactly when you wanted it to. This has been something that a lot of manufacturers have been trying to do for a while, but Mazda is going to be the first manufacturer to actually bring this for sale in the United States. Now, let's talk about how exactly this works. Spark controlled compression ignition is kind of a hybrid process. It slots between traditional diesel engines and traditional gasoline engines in terms of operation. It shares aspects of both and hopes to raise gasoline engine efficiency to the range of some modern diesel engines without worrying about nitrous oxide or soot production. To understand SkyActiveX, we first have to explain generally how gasoline and diesel engines work. First up, we have the modern diesel direct injection engine. Diesel engines are called compression ignition engines because instead of a spark plug igniting things, the heat of compressing the air is what gets things started. When you compress a gas, it heats up, and this is the basic principle that allows diesel engines to work. This is also, of course, the way air conditionings and refrigerators work. It's a thermodynamic principle. In a diesel cycle, air is drawn into the cylinder, the intake valve is then closed, and then the compression cycle starts and the air heats up. Somewhere around top dead center, which is when the piston is at the very top of its travel, diesel is injected into the cylinder, and when that fuel is atomized and the right air-fuel ratio is reached, boom, compressed ignition happens. Now because the majority of the fuel combusts at once, we get a strong push in the piston and therefore a large peak torque, which is characteristic of a diesel engine. Now we need to talk about gasoline, because things get a little bit more complicated. A traditional gasoline engine ingests a mix of air and atomized gasoline. The mixture is optimized for the engine and the load, but generally is close to optimum, or stoichiometric, which is the fancy word for the optimum air-fuel ratio mix. The mix is then compressed, a spark plug fires, and then the fuel starts to burn. But just like lighting a fuse, the burn starts at one point of ignition and then grows outward from there. And that means that not all the gasoline is burning at exactly the same time. Now it happens very quickly, but it's not all at that exact same moment. This results in a longer and slightly slower push on the piston versus a diesel engine. In order to improve efficiency, gasoline direct injection engines were then developed. Most GDI engines use at least two general modes of operation that allow compression to be raised to around 14 to 1 at the high point. Mazda's own Skyactiv G engines operate right around this same compression ratio, basically the highest in the industry for a traditional gasoline naturally aspirated engine. The first mode is a lean burn or stratified charge mode, which is used in low load situations. Air without fuel comes into the cylinder, just as in the diesel engine, but unlike a diesel engine, gasoline is injected during the compression stroke, not at the end of the compression stroke. The combustion chamber is designed in such a way that the fuel is concentrated around the spark plug in an air-fuel ratio mix that will be ignited by that spark. This allows the engine to use less fuel than an engine that had to fill the entire cylinder with a stoichiometric mix, or at least a mix that would be able to be sparked off by the spark plug. Things then go boom, and power happens just like a traditional gasoline engine. The other way that GDI engines can work is they can inject fuel during the intake stroke and during the compression stroke, and of course, sometimes even during the power stroke, for maximum power. The computer carefully monitors the air-fuel ratio mix in order to optimize emissions, power, and even cooling, 
by injecting more fuel than can actually burn in the engine, and that causes temperatures to drop inside the cylinder. Now let's get back to Mazda Skyactiv-X X engine. One of the key benefits to this technology is the ability to increase compression ratios beyond traditional limits. High compression is one of the reasons that diesel engines are so efficient, and that's exactly why Skyactiv-X uses a high compression ratio as well. So why can't we just crank up a standard gasoline engine to the high compression levels we find in diesel engines? The answer is easy. Gasoline is more volatile than diesel. And that means that if we just took a traditional gasoline engine and bumped up the compression to diesel-like compression ratios, ignition would happen before the cylinder was done compressing gases, and that's bad juju. If we tried to operate more on the traditional diesel cycle, then as we're injecting the fuel, it would actually start burning as soon as it was injected. That means that we would get a very rich burn right at the injector, not a great deal of power, and emissions could be a problem. That sort of spoils the whole reason to increase the compression ratio in the first place. So what can we do about this? Well, in theory, we could calculate just the right amount of air and fuel needed so that when things reach maximum compression, we get an explosion. But as it turns out, that's easier said than done because the perfect ratio changes based on temperature, altitude outside, temperature inside the cylinder, and a lot of other variables. In addition to this, switching from compression ignition to spark ignition has proved to be quite complicated when other companies have tried this. This is where the Mazda solution becomes quite interesting because in my head, it seems so simple that I can't think of why we haven't done this before. Instead of fighting the use of a spark plug, Mazda actually uses the spark plug to solve issues around compression ignition. Let's see how. Mazda starts off with an ultra lean mix of fuel and air in the cylinder. It's so lean that even the 16 to 1 compression ratio of the engine can't possibly ignite it on its own. So if this engine didn't have a spark plug and it was reciprocating around, the engine would simply be pumping this ultra lean mix of air and fuel around and not burning it. That's because in order for this mix to explode, we need to get things even more compressed. And that extra compression is the key. What Mazda does is they inject a small amount of gasoline later, then they ignite that with a spark plug. This burning fuel causes pressure inside the cylinder to rise to the point the compression ignition happens. Inside this cylinder is a blend of spark and compression ignition, but the purpose of the spark isn't to power the engine, it's to power the compression ignition cycle. Igniting the small pocket of rich air fuel ratio mix inside the cylinder causes pressure inside the entire cylinder to go up to the point where the ultra lean blend can then actually ignite. The result is a power stroke that's more similar to the diesel power stroke. When the spark goes off, we obviously get a little bit of force pressing down on the piston. However, once compression ignition happens, we then get a large force pressing down on the piston. That gives us the torque characteristics a little bit more similar to the diesel. Now, compression ignition doesn't work for all driving situations, and for the maximum in power, the engine needs to be able to switch modes back to a richer cycle and more traditional spark ignition. And that's been where other manufacturers have fallen down, because they weren't using the spark plug for everything. But because the Skyactiv-X is using the spark plug for everything, and thanks to modern variable valve timing systems, what they can do to switch modes is simply leave the intake valve open longer. This thereby decreases the effective compression of the engine to a range where they can do traditional spark ignition at more traditional air fuel ratio mixes. If that sounds familiar, that's because a lot of engines use this same modified auto cycle in order to improve efficiency. But in the Skyactiv X, they're not using this mode for efficiency, they're using it to be able to switch between compression ignition and spark ignition. Perhaps the most impressive thing about Skyactiv-X is how ready this seems for production. Because Mazda actually let us drive Skyactiv-X engines inside a current generation Mazda 3 that had some tweaks to it out on public roads in Southern California. And the big thing that I noticed was it feels just like a regular engine. It has sort of a more diesel-like lower end torque curve than your average gasoline engine, but in general it just felt like a regular old Mazda 3. I think that's actually high praise for this kind of technology. There were a few occasions where if you really romped on the throttle unexpectedly, you could get a little bit of uh, knock or pre-detonation going on there inside of the cylinder that was a little noticeable. Mazda says that that will be tuned out for the final version, but overall that's really the only thing I can comment on. Now this engine is not designed to replace the 2.5 liter turbocharged engine in Mazda's lineup because the power figures are more in line with their current generation 2.5 liter naturally aspirated gasoline engine. 
Mazda tells us that because the engine spends most of the drive cycle in its compression ignition mode, they were able to keep the existing six-speed automatic transmission and tweak the gear ratios a little bit in order to make things more advantageous for the engine, rather than moving to a more complicated eight or nine-speed automatic like we see in some of the competition. That of course makes sense. For instance, if you take a look at the 2018 and 2019 Chevrolet Equinox with its turbo diesel engine, they actually have retained the six-speed automatic with that engine because according to General Motors, there wasn't really a fuel economy benefit for moving to a different unit. An interesting tidbit is that while we were driving around in this Mazda 3, there was a little display on the dashboard. Again, this is a prototype vehicle, uh, but it showed us what mode the engine was operating in, whether that was the ultra lean compression ignition mode or whether that was spark ignition mode. And spark ignition mode seemed really just to be limited to high speed or high output situations. So if you had the engine floored out on the freeway, then it would enter that spark ignition mode. But for 90, 95% of the drive cycle, it really was in its compression ignition mode. That's what's really interesting about this engine. That's been our quick look at the brand new Mazda Skyactiv X engine, which again you will find under the hood of a Mazda supposedly sometime in the 2019 calendar year. If Mazda can deliver on all of the promises of Skyactiv X, we should be seeing a brand new Mazda 3 with fuel economy that's at least 20% better than the current generation Mazda 3. Depending on your driving situation, it could even be 30 or perhaps even higher. Based on the fuel economy numbers we're seeing right now in the compact hatchback or sedan segment, that should comfortably put Mazda into the lead. Now, of course, Mazda has not said exactly which vehicle is going to get Skyactiv-X first. However, we feel pretty confident here at Alex and Autos that it's going to be the Mazda 3 because that's going to be announced right around the same time as the production version of this engine. Now, Mazda has said that we should expect to see it in a variety of different Mazda models at some point in the future. We really don't know exactly when that will be. I expect that over time, it is likely going to replace the 2.5 liter naturally aspirated four-cylinder engine that we see, for instance, in the Mazda 3 and the Mazda 6. Thanks for taking the time to check out this video. Be sure and hit that subscribe button down there below me on the screen. And of course, stay tuned for our full drive of the Mazda Skyactiv-X when we can get our hands on one probably in about a year. You can also find us over at facebook.com slash And if you want to support this channel, head over to patreon.com. I'll see you next week.